so there's no update there's no sneak peeks uh, and it's been over a month now or we're, we're almost at a full month uh, with basically uh, zip dust uh, as far as the next update to come after the Fantastic Four is coming and uh, you know it's it gets challenging it definitely does get a little bit harder to make content um, when there isn't new content introduced and I do uh, rely on the schedules of the developers to make new videos um, and I try to do a mixture of videos and I've been trying that a lot more uh, especially in the last few months you know so yesterday we did content so I was thinking of doing or I was looking forward to doing something a bit more uh, theory based or kind of more talkative based for those of you that don't actually watch and just listen you won't be missing much except for my facial expressions and the other bonus of not having videos uh, or not having updates not having videos yeah, the other bonus of not having update news yet is that all of the people who make the uh, out of content yet jokes uh, actually have jokes to make. So here's to you. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to talk about Thor, the mighty god of hammers, and where he sits in the pantheon of Marvel future fight uh, gods. One of the uh, first characters to get tier three, you know, among the first. Uh, one of the first characters, among the first again to get that huge Infinity War boost. But since then, I feel as though Thor has taken a steady decline, uh, whereas some of his peers have not. Now, I'm not saying Thor, Thor, Thor. I'm not saying Thor is a bad tier three. I'm not saying you shouldn't tier three Thor. Although you shouldn't tier three Thor right now because Captain Marvel's coming. But I will say this. Upon further thought, and maybe you can engage in this activity right now with me and see if you agree, Thor's value as a tier 3 character is inflated because he's a universal type and because he is the only universal tier 3 that we have. And so he takes the spotlight up all by himself, a big boy taking up all that sunshine, and no one else uh, can, can you know really punch nearly as hard as he can because just because of his insane stat boost. And... Basically, my guess, without knowing, without working at Netmarble and getting the dev reports that they would give me if I still worked there, uh, I would say that whoever the next uh, Universal Tier 3 is will eclipse uh, Thor. Now, if that's Captain Marvel, that's pretty convenient because we expect her to be super OP because, you know, Marvel, the MCU, Kevin Feige, they're making this huge push for her uh, movie, and so they're they're not gonna they're not gonna want the games that introduce this character to introduce her in a way that's nothing that's anything short of fantastic. They're gonna want her to uh, be front and center, and in this game, to be front and center, you have to be OP. That's just basically how it goes. There's too many damn characters. 181 characters now. You can't be OP if you're not you know punching in the top 10, top 20 of those characters. And Thor is barely punching in the top 20 of those characters right now. I mean, okay, if you have multiple tier 3s, or if you have, you know, a few tier 3s that include Thor, and you have a bunch of other native tier 2s built up to level 60, level 70, uh, think about it. Do you use Thor for world boss every day? Do you look forward to using Thor? Um, do you use Thor in giant boss raid? Do you use Thor in PvP and timeline battle? Probably not. Um, he doesn't do as well as any of these other characters that I've mentioned that are either tier 3 or native tier 2 level 70 with uniforms. He's not as good as Luna Snow or Sharon Rogers or even Captain America. He's not as good as Deadpool. Um, he's not as good as Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver. There's tons of characters that really outclass him despite the fact that he's in a rare class where only 10 or 11 other characters exist. Uh, and that's definitely, uh, you know, it's 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 something, right? It's, it's something to consider. He is obviously still better than some other tier threes. He's better than Ant Man. He's probably better than Iron Man. Possibly Black Panther. Maybe um, Spider Man. But that's about it. I mean, you could probably compare Thor to Magneto. Um, Magneto gets about, let's say, for for example, if we take um, uh, ABX Alliance Battle Extreme as the barometer, uh, Thor on his day gets about. You know, a bad, uh, you know, a so-so player gets about, maybe the average player gets about a million, a good player gets about 1.4, 1.5 million, and then your amazing top-tier players get like 1.8, 1.9, possibly 2 million. 
Uh, Magneto's not that much different. Now, you don't get as much of a bump. You're not getting 2 million with Magneto, but you know, a good, uh, a decent player gets 800,000. A good player gets 1.2 or 1.1 or 1.2 million. A great player, an amazing player gets 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 with Magneto. And you have to consider for Magneto, he doesn't have the same support as Thor does. So Thor, on top of having Medusa's leadership, which is 42%, or you can even go for uh, Hyperion's leadership, which is 45% plus 5% for the team-up bonus, because Thor and Hyperion have a lot of uh, interactions in the comics. You also have Ghost Panther, which is giving Thor the Avenging Fire bonus, the 45% increased damage to supervillains. There is no blast villain that gives that bonus for Magneto to use. So Magneto is scoring not that much less than Thor is without those bonuses. And same thing goes for World Boss Ultimate. If you make similar teams for both of these characters, I don't imagine that they would score or that they would be able to compete too much differently. Now, there is, of course, some difference between the fact that Magneto's damage is almost all energy, but Thor's is split between energy and physical. Um, but it is safe to say that while they can both do up to stage, let's say, 30, maybe 35, maybe at most if you push it 40, um, that's where it ends. And again, if you're a new player, or if you're a newer player, new-ish, and you got Thor Tier 3 because he's your favorite Tier 3, don't feel bad. I'm not saying that you made a mistake or you did something wrong, but for those of us who are later on in the game, for those of us that have more resources and we're kind of looking at the big picture, we've zoomed out, we're in the helicopter, okay, you're, you're still on the subway, we're up in the helicopter uh, checking things out. Yeah, he's not going to dominate, just like Magneto, he's not going to dominate in any one world boss. So he's not even clearing 2 million, I mean barely clearing 2 million with the absolutely absolute most OP build doesn't even clear 2 million in ABX, like Captain America, Sharon Rogers does 4 million, Luna Snow does 4 million. He's not doing high stages, he's not, you know, in the top 10 or maybe the top 5 characters for any one world boss clear. He's not very competitive in PvP. Well, there you go, that's basically all the game modes. Thank you very much, pack up your bags, close your, close your suitcases, we're done. Uh, and that is the question, or that is the, the result that I keep coming back to. Thor is good, he just doesn't excel anywhere, and so that does leave him behind in uh, the Tier 3 class of characters who are quickly becoming uh, dominant forces in different game modes. You know, Deadpool is one of the best because he dominates in both PvE and PvP, depending on how you build him. While Sharon Rogers doesn't really dominate in PvP, even if you build her that way, she absolutely dominates in PvE, even if you don't build her very well. Same goes for Luna Snow, and she has some function in PvP. Captain America, same thing, you can definitely build him both ways, and while he might not be good for high-end PvP like Alliance Tournament, he's definitely still very good for Timeline Battle, to the point where he gets banned uh, on the ban list uh, from... Oh, no, I don't want to do that. He gets put on the ban list from time to time. I don't think Thor's on any ban list. Uh, so this is something that we do uh, want to consider from time to time because not only does it allow us to um, reevaluate a character's worth to inform newer players or inform players who are thinking about their next Tier 3, even if they're not newer players, they've saved up and they're, they're bored, I want a Tier 3 new character. Should I Tier 3 Thor? Probably not. Thor is probably the worst character to Tier 3 right now because of the impending Captain Marvel Tier 3, uh, which may put Thor's worth into even harsher light. Because, just imagine, sure, um, Captain Marvel comes out, and we know how much Netmarvel loves female characters, and Captain Marvel gets a Tier 3 buff like, like uh, Sharon Rogers. Imagine having a universal as strong as Sharon Rogers, and then imagine comparing that person or that character to Thor. Yeah. Even with a team-up that includes Valkyrie, okay, Odin, Thor, and Valkyrie, he takes about seven minutes to clear Giant Boss Raid. Sharon takes about two minutes. It's it's absolutely um, colossal, the, the gap between these characters. So, um, on the one hand, it's good to, you know, explain and, and to think about these things for other players, to give them advice, and I'm trying to give you guys advice right now from my perspective. Secondly, it opens up a dialogue. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm undervaluing Thor and I'm missing some great power that he has. And you guys can tell me down below in the comments. And then the third thing is, probably one of my favorite things, to speculate on how we could improve his situation. Because uh, I've said it once before, it's, it's unlikely, but it's possible that Tier 3 skills get reworked with new uniforms. It's unlikely, but it is possible. And I think Thor would be a prime candidate for having the damage 
or the effect of Thunder Blow being, you know, doubled or tripled because it's just a very weak tier three skill a la, you know, Iron Man and a couple of other characters. It just doesn't have any punch. The animation is so cool and then the effect is, is just kind of boring. Whereas, to be honest, Captain America's tier three animation is not that snazzy. He just kind of charges with some kind of rushing wind effects behind him, but the damage is insane and the buffs are even more insane. But secondly, and I think more interestingly, where do you want Thor to be when he gets his supposed buff? If he's ever going to get a buff, if he's going to get a new uniform for Endgame or whatever, do you want Thor to just become more powerful offensively to make him a good PvE candidate, especially as a two-way PvE character that can do both physical and energy-based damage so that he can do, you know, Proxima and Cull Obsidian or Proxima and uh, Ebony or whatever? Or do you want them to take more of a PvP turn with Thor? Because he has slugged it out with the likes of Hulk and other, you know, extremely powerful, extremely endurance-based characters. You know, he has tons of stamina, uh, and he can go for 12 rounds 12 times. Personally, and I'm asking this question, but I know you want to hear, or I want you to hear what I have to say first. That's why I'm talking first. Uh, I want him to be PvP focused. I think it would be really cool for them to take some of these Avengers and make them kind of solely PvE, PvP characters, kind of like they've done for Thanos. They've improved this character, they've refined how powerful he is to the point that he's the dominant force in PvP, but they've very carefully made it so that it is PvP. He's just not good for PvE content. His damage is all split between physical energy and elemental. He's got way too much AoE. Uh, which doesn't really work against a single target like World Boss Ultimate or Giant Boss Raid. But then, holy shit, he's an absolute headache for any other character to fight in PvE con or sorry in PvP content. And so, I would really like to see them do something like that for Thor, a la uh, a la Thanos, and basically kind of be the yin to Thanos's yang because you know should aim for the head and all that stuff. Uh, how they could really do that, I'm not sure. They could give, for example, Thunderblow the ability to ignore iframes because you're kind of igniting the whole field of battle in lightning, uh, or yeah, lightning damage. So having that kind of static apply whether the character is taking uh, damage or not through iframes and just constant ticking down would help him get rid of you know, enemy shields or barriers, get rid of HP shields. It would help him trigger uh, invincibility procs sooner so that he could follow that up with a damage attack that penetrates. And it would help him deal continuous damage to characters that would just hide behind iframes. And it would be a pretty unique effect given that we don't have AoE skills that kind of last long and have dot effects, damage over time, that have that uh, ignore iframe skill. I know I like to pick on the ignore iframe uh, effect a lot because I love it and I want more characters to have it to counter some of the boring iframe meta that we have in PvP, but I do think it would be interesting. Beyond that, I think Thor just needs a few more effects on some of his skills, whether they are kind of offensive, something like Fracture on Stormbreaker or, or, or Thunderstrike, or something, you know, where he debuffs the enemy uh, or he, uh, you know, doesn't allow them to put up their debuff for some reason. Maybe if he had canceled debuff, if he got that from Odin. That would also be a pretty powerful effect to, to kind of stop him from getting stunned or, or guard broke guard broken, maybe I think it includes guard break. It includes all of the other debuffs besides fracture. I'm sure about that. And of course if they gave him super armor and or guard break immunity, because he doesn't have either one of those. He has invincibility, but it's not the same. Uh, and so you absolutely need that for PvP if you want to be taken seriously. So those are my thoughts on Thor, and that is kind of the discussion that I wanted to bring up to you guys today. Is Thor a worthwhile tier 3, especially in the atmosphere recently that we've gotten of tier 3 characters like Sharon Rogers, like Luna Snow, but even going as far back as Captain America and Deadpool? All four of these still outshine ya boy. Um, and how are they going to improve Thor? Does he need to be improved? Is this even a, is this even an issue at all? Should we, be, should we be looking at other characters who are much worse off than Thor Odinson? Um, and maybe this doesn't matter at all, and I'm and I'm overblowing something that uh, you know is basically just up to personal preference. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Hit me up on Twitch for more. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.